Hey, what's up? Welcome to today's video, y'all. This weekend, I nerded out so hard and got caught in this like rabbit hole of watching a whole bunch of videos and documentaries and things about ancient Egypt. <laughs> More specifically, about King Tut. And I wanna talk about it. So I thought it would be fun to do like a get ready with me story time. And I will tell you guys all about King Tut. His life, his legacy, his tomb, his corpse, all that fun stuff. So just make sure that you like this video and don't forget to subscribe and let's just get going. We're gonna do kind of an inspired by ancient Egypt look. Maybe I'll revisit this around Halloween and do something a little more dramatic. I have to do something wearable today because I have things to do today. So King Tut is probably the most well-known ancient Egyptian emperor. What I find most interesting about King Tut is that he is not particularly remarkable for any given reason. And in fact, if you compare him closely with other emperors from that time, He's honestly kind of somewhat unremarkable. <laughs> the big reason for this thought is just that his tomb, where he was mummified and buried, is very different from other emperors' tombs. So here's the tea on ancient Egyptian tombs. They believed that life continued after death, and so like when you die, you just kind of go somewhere else and keep living. So for like the kings and queens, the emperors and you know, those important folk, they built these super elaborate tombs that were decorated all crazy and had a whole bunch of, you know, ornamental furniture and basically all of their stuff. For someone who is an emperor, like King Tut, for example, who basically rules over all of Egypt and is the, the top guy in charge, you would expect a pretty, a pretty intense setup for his tomb, right? King Tut, his tomb was a lot smaller space-wise than other emperors and royals around that time. And there was a lot of evidence in the tomb that suggested it was prepared in kind of a rush. Like it wasn't so tediously detail-oriented as other tombs. There was mold on the walls that was 3,000 years old, and that suggested to them that the paint wasn't even dry when they seal sealed up the tomb. And so a lot of the stuff that I watched, this was like a big running question of like, well, what is that about? Why is his so much smaller? And why is it so much less decorated and elaborate and ornamental and all of that? And he had all of his stuff put in his tomb with him as well, but it was all kind of just like shoved in there, all stacked on top of each other. It wasn't neat or orderly or anything like that. And so the whole reason that King Tut specifically is so famous to us nowadays is because whenever archeologists started to discover those tombs, like in the early 20th century, his tomb was the most well-preserved. So all of the tombs were full of like gold and treasures and and so looters and, and thieves kind of stole all their stuff basically. And so a lot of the big emperor's tombs were just robbed and messed up. King Tut's was like buried under a whole bunch of debris and rubble and stuff like that. So it was not easy to get to and therefore his tomb was more well-preserved than other emperors. So they were able to learn a lot more from King Tut's tomb. And we know the most about King Tutankhamun because of his tomb. So that's why he's so famous to us today. So a lot, oh, hey Fallout, what's good? His predecessor and father, King Akhenaten, was a little bit like, if you will. <laughs> he was known for having these crazy religious visions and he pretty much like upended the entire religious system of ancient Egypt at that time and gave them like a whole new spin on it. So they were worshiping multiple gods and they had all of these ideas about what happened in the afterlife and how life continues and that's why they need to spend all this time building these crazy elaborate tombs and and very carefully mummified bodies. Well, Akhenaten and his crazy religious visions, 
he basically changed the whole structure of their religion and said, we believe in one God now, and that is the God of the, the sun, I think it was. Also, nothing happens after death. And so he was thought to be a very heretic ruler around that time. He was not super popular for that reason. So they figured out that Akhenaten was King Tut's daddy. And as for his mom, they figured out who she was, but they didn't have a name for her. They just called her the younger woman. Akhenaten's wife, I believe was Nefertiti. I could be wrong on that one, but his like main wife was not King Tut's mother. Rather, it was this younger woman who was like an unofficial wife. So they figured that out. They're like, we got mom, we got dad. Well, turns out that this younger woman and Akhenaten are brother and sister. So that's gross, but it does track for that period of time. Royal people back in those times were like, we don't want to breed with any like poor bloodlines, right? So they just were like, we'll just keep going with each other, I guess. So King Tut was very much a product of incest. And it's likely that both of his parents also were products of incest and, you know, it just goes on and on and on and it's a lot of fun, right? The pressed glitter in this palette is actually really nice. So they learned a lot from King Tut's tomb, but they also learned a lot from King Tut's actual mummy. And they were actually able to do this full, like, digital reconstruction like vision visual of what he probably looked like and you know he wasn't the cutest i don't think he would have done well on tinder or anything like that luckily he was royal so he just got to marry his own sister as well so the archaeologists and scientists were able to deduce that not just King Tut but also his father Akhenaten and probably even further back generations they were afflicted with a condition, but I can't remember what the condition is called. But basically this condition caused them to develop certain feminine like features. So they had wider than normal hips. They also had a little bit of a, a breast situation going on. He had a pretty pronounced overbite and he also had a club foot. So King Tut became king when he was nine years old. Because of that, it was like, you know, his advisors were really the ones that were in charge because he was just a little kid. They were trying to gear back towards the original religion that they had before Akhenaten changed everything up. So a big question that archaeologists and scientists have always had was, well, okay, how did he die? So the original hypothesis was that he was killed by a fatal blow to the head. Isn't that just like our cynical modern day selves to be like, well, he must have been brutally murdered. That's like the first thing that they went to. He was 19 or so when he died. They thought that perhaps people were concerned Tut would try to re-implement his father's, you know, religious craziness basically. From the like CT scans and the MRIs or whatever that they did with his mummy though, they found that he had no evidence he had taken any kind of blow to the head at all. So with a big nasty blow to the head being ruled out, they thought, okay, well maybe he died in a chariot accident. He had like, it was like a dozen different ornamental chariots in his tomb with him. Further investigation into the mummy and like the recreation of, of him, they found some other interesting physical characteristics of King Tut. So one was that he had like a pretty much just completely blown out knee, like that he he fractured his femur bone. Is that the, your thigh bone? I can't remember. It's that biggest bone in your body that's really, really hard to break. But he also had a club foot. So in the recreated images, I'm gonna insert because I don't wanna be the only one that has to have this image in my mind. You guys now have it too. <laughs> but he had this weird club foot that was likely a genetic issue because of the, you know, incest or whatever. So it was like ruled that it was pretty much impossible for him to have driven a chariot to result in, in an accident. Like he, he couldn't even walk. 
Something else they found from investigating his mummy was that he likely had uh, what's, I think it's Kohler's disease. I hope that's right. Basically he had like a, a brittle bone type of disease. And so this brittle bone disease is a congenital disease. So again, something that he probably inherited from his brother and sister parents. As far as like the crazy blow to the knee goes, they're like, well, if he had this bone disease, then it wouldn't have been quite as difficult to break that bone as it would have been for a person without that disease that has perfectly healthy, strong bones, right? So then it's like, okay, he wasn't murdered to, for anyone to like gain his political power. He didn't die in like a chariot accident. And it's really unlikely that he died from any kind of physical exertion or sport or anything like that. So remember how I said his papa, Akhenaten, used to have these crazy religious visions, right? Well, he's not the only one. So Akhenaten had some pretty like elaborate ones given that he totally upended and changed the whole Egyptian religious structure. But he's not the only one that was like recorded and accounted as having these religious visions. And they deduced that he probably had epilepsy. It was not unlikely that he'd inherited epilepsy and that, you know, all of those religious visions that him and his dad and his ancestors had had were all like seizures. You know, they didn't know about seizures back then. They didn't, they didn't know about a whole lot back then actually. <laughs> so that's what they think did him in. They think that he probably had epilepsy. They think he had epilepsy. What probably happened was he had a seizure and it resulted in that big old nasty blown out knee. And perhaps like just that whole experience killed him or he experienced some kind of infection from that break and then just died. So if that is the case, then like, what's the tea on the tombs? Let me tell you. Another element of their religious beliefs was that once someone had passed, you have 70 days to get them mummified and get them in their tomb with all their stuff and on with their lives or on with their afterlives rather. <laughs> And given how elaborately decorated these tombs were, it is likely that they began preparing tombs like well before someone passed. So they think it's likely that Tut's death was unexpected and he died pretty young, right? And so given that they only had 70 days, his tomb probably wasn't ready. And so they had to improvise and they ended up giving him someone else's tomb someone probably not as like big of a deal as Tut, but his tomb was, that tomb was maybe like closer to being prepared than, than his ultimately was. I think probably the saddest thing about Tut's tomb was that there were two mummified stillborn babies in the tomb with him. And those were likely his own stillborn children that he had with his sister slash wife. So that's a real bummer. So that's the story of King Tut. And what's crazy is that he was this sort of inconsequential ruler of Egypt way back when, right? He, he wasn't super impactful, super important during that time. But now, thousands of years later, he is the most famous Egyptian emperor there ever was because he's the one that we know the most about. So that is fascinating. I wonder if in 3000 years, someone will, will dig up my body and, and turn me into a famous thing. <laughs> I probably could have done like a winged out line, but again, like glitter and liner in the daytime. I'm not trying to get, I'm not trying to go too over the top. So maybe I'll revisit this around Halloween. A big part of that ancient Egyptian aesthetic is a big dramatic wing liner. So that would be fun. What is your favorite ancient Egyptian fact? Or what is your favorite period of time that perhaps I should try an inspired look from? definitely let me know. Definitely make sure that you like this video and subscribe if you're not already. I really hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. So 
I will see you in the next one. Bye!